Hello, regular girls. Um, today, you're joined by just me, Renee. Um, because here's what happened. Yesterday, Stacy and I were recording. We did a lovely, fun-filled podcast talking about all the things in the world. Um, and then my file that I sent her was corrupted. Um, and she is a busy woman that's doing double header shows on the main stage of Second City Toronto, which you should most definitely check out. Um, so I'm writing solo. It feels very weird to be doing a solo podcast, but I've done a few things. One, I have a beer with me. Ready? I'm going to open it right now. Oh my God, did you hear that? It's like a commercial over here. So it's a peanut butter porter beer. I've never had this. Um, oh my God, it's very peanut buttery. Oh. Oh, I don't know if I like that. It's like oddly sweet, but also like thick because it's a porter. It's like a, a, I don't even, I don't know. It's a dark beer and it's pretty gnarly and quite heavy. Um, so I have a beer that's happening because I feel like that might help me get from one stage to the other while filling time here on a podcast. And the other thing that I did <laughs> was uh, that I went on my Twitter and I asked you guys to send me some questions. And let me tell you, you guys sent me some great questions. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll enjoy our time here together. I think that it'll be fun. Um, but yeah, it sucks I don't have Stacey to, uh, to bounce my ideas off of. So if this sucks, I'd say blame her, but really the whole thing's my fault. So here we go. Going to my profile. These are the tweets that I liked. Very first question from The Jaded Jobbers. My favorite childhood movie. Um, okay, so I have a few childhood movies that were my favorite. Um, definitely Labyrinth is up there. Labyrinth will always have a place in my heart because David Bowie... Um, David Bowie is one of my uh, favorite human beings of all time in general, but it also taught me a lot about male genitalia um, because he's wearing ridiculous tight pants the entire time and you can see his junk. Anybody that's seen Labyrinth knows that. If you have not seen Labyrinth, watch it. Learn a thing or two. Also, great soundtrack. Um, obviously done by David Bowie. Um, delicious little cute worm. It's adorable. Oh, I got a new beer brought in for me. Hip, hip, hip. Thank you. Thank you very much because this, uh, that peanut butter beer was disgusting. So I've got a better one. I've got a, I've got a Miller Lite on hand. That will treat me much better. Uh, okay, so uh, David Bowie in Labyrinth. Love Labyrinth. Also Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory one of my favorite things. It's so magical. Uh, it kind of started a love of Roald Dahl for me as well. Um, I went and read a bunch of his books. Um, of course, James and the Giant Peach is one of the all-time greats. Um, I also love a good movie adapted from a novel. Big fan. Um, what else do I have from childhood movies? Um, I guess like Steel Magnolias, but that's not really like one that I liked as a kid. It's just one that every time I see Steel Magnolias is on TV, I have to watch it, um, which is the exact same for, um, uh, oh God, why do I always forget the name of this? Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, not You've Got Mail, the other one. The other one, you guys. Um, okay, next question from Justin Sterling. Favorite cartoon growing up? So... The other day, I realized on Hulu that they actually have this, like, it's like a three-hour-long uh, movie, but it's all different segments of all old cartoons, which I feel like I can never find. So I used to love Little Lulu, uh, and I feel like that's impossible to find nowadays, but it's on Hulu. It made me very excited, but I had to, like, skim through a bunch of, like, older stuff, but it was, like, old-ass Looney Tunes. Like, Bugs Bunny did not even look the same. Elmer Fudd is very fat. Uh, but still charming. Um, other favorite cartoons? I mean, I was a Simpsons person for sure. Love Simpsons. Um, also, I mean, I guess based off of my love of Labyrinth, I was always like a bit of like um, like a Jim Henson puppet kind of person too. Um, so yeah, I always liked Fraggle Rock, stuff like that was uh, definitely up my alley. Um, okay, this is from um, Sasha Banks. Legit. Do you and your dog have a secret relationship that Dean doesn't know about? Listen, here's some information. What kind of a dog mom would I be if I didn't have a secret relationship with my dog? Of course, him and I have, we have a different relationship. We've got our own language of love. Uh, we do this thing that's going to sound weird, but if you're a dog mom or dad, you know that you guys do weird things with your dog. So ever since Blue was a baby, 
I've always kissed his face like way too much, like right on the mouth, which now his teeth are jutted out of. So I like, I smooch up on his teeth. Um, but I do this thing where he like rests his sloppy, jalopy face on my face. If I like lay down, he uses my head as a headrest. Is that weird? Is it gross? Is it unsanitary? Probably. But listen, what are germs between a mom and a dog? It's nothing. Barely an issue whatsoever. Um, okay, here's a good question from Jack Klipsch. Klipsch, am I saying that right? Um, it's Jackie, Jackie Umlips. I don't know. You're confusing me, Jack. Um, okay, what is your favorite Bud Light Lime Arita flavor? I did not know that there were other flavors. I thought that it was just the Bud Light Lime. But you know what I do love is the um, uh, Chiladas. Chiladas would be one of my favorite hybrid beer drinks, without question. Oh my God, that peanut butter beer made me burp. Not good. Do not have a peanut butter beer. It's disgusting. Too sweet. Let me crack open this Miller Lite. I don't have a bottle opener. I might have to do it on my teeth. Ready? Can you hear that? If I crack a tooth, damn, I can't get it. I'm nervous. I'm like legit going to crack a tooth and I have to fly tomorrow to go do Raw and SmackDown. So uh, I guess I won't have this beer. Damn it. Hmm. That's problematic. Anyways, all right. Next question. Um, this is from Sheridan. Sheridan, what do you think about the whole Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson ordeal? Oh, I couldn't imagine the heartache. Khloe Kardashian. So Stacey and I actually talked about this on the podcast that um, did not exist. Um, it's so heartbreaking. Khloe Kardashian, I feel like, is hands down the best of the Kardashians. She's the best one. She's charming. She's funny. She's a total babe. And now she finally seems to have found love. She's going to have a baby. Things are going to work out for Khloe. Then Tristan Thompson, this six foot nine man who thinks that he can just sneak around without anybody seeing this or paying any attention to who he is or what's he doing while you are in a full-fledged baby mama relationship with a Kardashian. Are you mad? Find out he's cheating on her with up to five women. All sorts of information about it. It makes me so sad for Khloe Kardashian. It makes me sad because, I mean, at some point, she's going to assume that real love does not exist. Uh, and that's really sad for me. I feel like she deserves the best of the best, and she's just not getting it. Guys like Tristan Thompson are giving uh, lots of men a bad name. Uh, these men that just think that they can do whatever they want and have no repercussions. But what I do love is how much people have been blasting him on his social media because he deserves all of it. Everybody is throwing this guy to the gutter. You've got to be like a real douche nozzle to cheat on your pregnant wife. Or uh, they're not married, but whatever. Your pregnant significant other. But what Stacy told me that I didn't know that maybe you guys know is that when Chloe got with him... He already had a five-month-old pregnant girlfriend. So this is a thing that he regularly does, which, I mean, really kind of in hindsight, karma is a bitch. If you were the girl that stole a guy from another girl, and let alone a pregnant girl, that is going to bite you in the, in the ass. It also tells you what kind of a dude you're working with. So unfortunate. It's so sad. It's such a bummer. But... You kind of know what kind of, yeah, you know what kind of person you're getting. If you are the person the person cheats with, they're going to cheat on you. I feel like that is the mantra. That's how that goes. Um, okay, next question um, from Kelsey. I am Kelsey91. What is your favorite thing to cook? Um, okay, so you guys know that I love cooking. I'm obsessed with cooking. It's literally all I think about. I haven't been like, I've been going to bed super early lately and I'm not really sure why. I just like pass out at 10 p.m. Uh, I guess this is aging guys. Aging is real and this is where I'm at but I fall asleep super early but it also means that I wake up in the middle of the night at like 3, 4 a.m. and I'm up for like at least an hour and I just scroll through Instagram of food things. I look at um, all of the taste made sites um, uh Taste made Japan uh, and just like regular taste made. There's like taste made France. There's there's a bunch of different ones. These things are my obsession. But here's the other thing that I've really been into lately is Greek food. Love me some Greek food. I've been ordering it through Postmates when I'm at home. But tonight, my friends, I'm making my own. Um, so I've marinated some chicken. I just got regular chicken breast. Marinating it with um, 
a little olive oil, lots of lemon, some oregano, salt and pepper, a little paprika. Paprika? Paprika? How do you say it? I'm going to say paprika. I think that's the way you're supposed to say it. Um, so I'm cooking it with that. Uh, and then I'm also going to be having, I made um, like a Greek salad that is just tomatoes, onion, or wait, no onion. Husband does not like onion. Tomato, avocado, cucumber, feta, salt, pepper, oregano. This is going to be the move. Uh, I'm going to barbecue all of this except for that salad. It's ready to go. And then I think I'm going to attempt to make the lemon Greek potatoes. Um, So that's kind of what's been up my alley lately. But I I wouldn't say that I have like a regular... uh, food item that I love to cook. My favorite thing is just like finding a new recipe and trying to make it work. Um, So I I don't feel like I'm like that much of a repeater when it comes to cooking. Do a lot of seafood, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I like to switch it up. I also really like to dabble into like other ethnicities and see what I can make happen. Uh, Cause it's a lot of fun for me. I love that. Um, okay, next question from Alex Woodwards. What kind of books do you like? Are you a romantic or mystery book kind of girl? Um, I like all books. That's not true. Um, there's a lot of books that I don't like, but uh, I, I I don't know. I, so right now I'm reading um, like a murder mystery. That's what I've been on like a big kick of is um, like chick lit murder mystery. So I'm reading Ruth Ware's new book um, who did uh, The Girl in Cabin 10 uh, in a dark, dark wood. These are all part of um, Reese Witherspoon's book club thing. I love a book club. I'm such a nerd. I feel like it's so, it's like something old timey about it that I find um, very fun and intriguing. So um, anyways, I'm reading Ruth Ware's book right now, but I also have, I've got a little romance novel on deck for once I'm finished with that. I'm going to try to open this beer again one time. Hold on, guys, bear with me. Listen to this fiasco as it happens. Line it up. <coughs> Oh, shoot. I'm scared I'm going to make a mess. Uh, or break this bottle. Hold on. Guys, I'm putting you on pause. I'm going to go open the beer. One sec. And I'm back. It's like you guys didn't even know that I was gone. Now I have my Miller Lite. We're ready to party, buddies. Let me just have a little sip-ski here. How am I doing for a solo podcast so far? Am I filling the time? Am I stretching it out? We're at 12 minutes. We're in it to win it all, y'all. Okay, next question. Um, This is from Steve, Zan Lunar 05. Um, What's your go-to comfort food when you're not feeling your best? So when I'm not feeling my best, a.k.a. let's call it hungover, um, my favorite thing to have that always bounces me back and revives a little life into this little lady is... um, You know that like yellow chicken, like the um, Lipton chicken noodle soup? That's my jam. That always resuscitates me. I feel like I just need like so much sodium. I assure you, when I die, it's going to be from sodium overload. It's, it is what it is. I've accepted it. I like salt. I refuse to take it out of my diet. It, I, I like it. Also, a saltine. Oh, my God. I will eat sleeves upon sleeves of saltines. They're my, it's honestly one of my favorite foods. Um, but if we're talking like... Just like regular, luxurious, good comfort food. I love a good mac and cheese, but I feel like I come across mac and cheese all the time, whether it's in catering or if you're like going to a new restaurant. Every restaurant has mac and cheese on the menu, duh. But if it's not worth it, I won't do it. I have been known from time to time to take a scoop of mac and cheese, and if it's not worth the calories, I spit it out like a true psychopath. I got, you got to pick and choose your battles, you know? That's a hill that I'm willing to die on. Um, so yeah, I, I like a good mac and cheese, but it has to be like with legit good cheese. Add a little truffle in there. Come on. Uh, and I've talked before about adding um, like just Campbell's cream of mushroom soup to your mac and cheese. Decadence. Decadent. Decadent Mondays is what I believe that we call it. Um, but that is good stuff. I really love a good mac and cheese. Um, yeah, I feel like, I mean, that those two things really sum me up. I love a good soup and I love a mac and cheese. Um, okay. Okay. Next, a question. Oh, this one's good from uh, Donkey Kong Dad from Jen. I'm assuming that you took that name from me, right? When I was Donkey Kong Daddy off of Up, Up, Down, Down. Actually, my Twitter name was Donkey Kong Daddy for a hot second. So I'm hoping that this is an homage to that. If not, then me and you are soul sisters, I guess. All right. Casey Musgrave's new album. 
is nonstop listening for me. I'm obsessed with it. Golden Hour is the name of the album. So I've like heard of Casey Musgraves before, but I've never really listened to her. I kind of, honestly, shame on me, but I thought she was just going to be like sort of a run of the mill, little like country pop singer songwriter. Not the case. This album has been um, quite a delight. I've been listening to it front and back. Um, I've also, so I've been actively um, really trying to learn to play the ukulele. And I've been making some ground. Like I've actually broken ground on it. I'm starting to sound like I kind of know what I'm doing. I know a few notes. Um, and it's awesome. I love it. So anyways, I feel like the more I listen to Casey Musgraves, the more I decide... God, beer makes me burp. The more I decide that um, maybe I missed my calling and I should have always just been a ukulele player and I could have played with Casey Musgraves or maybe had my own album. Okay, so my favorite song off of, of, um, of Golden Hour, there's a bunch of them. Slow Burn, Love, which is the opening track. Butterflies, it was the first one that I heard off of this. Um, I listened to it when we were doing a road trip and it was before the entire album came out, so it was just one of the singles that was released. And it's just like a really pretty quirky little ditty um i feel like there's something like very whimsical and 70s and dreamy about this entire album also her style you guys please look it up if you don't follow her on instagram check out her style which is funny because so i click on everybody's picture of like people that i follow to see who they tag for their outfits and like most of her outfits are from juicy couture which is known for their like velour track suits um so I guess this line's not coming out into the fall, but it is so up my alley. Everything is sequence. Everything's bedazzled. Bright colors. Rainbow patterns. I am in love. Um, so yeah, definitely check out her Instagram because she's a great follow. But anyway, so Butterflies was the first one I heard. I love that. The song Mother legit made me miss uh, my mom. Space Cowboy. Um, I, I really like the... Um, I like the phrasing that she uses in it. It's pretty cool. Velvet Elvis is just like a fun, upbeat, um, cool song. It's like fun to sing around to. And um, Golden Hour. I love Golden Hour. It's just such a sweet song. It makes me think of uh, my husband. I played it for him uh, to let him know that he's my Golden Hour. So listen to it. And you guys will know what I'm talking about. But it's really, really great. So happy to have stumbled upon a new artist that makes me want to listen to like more and more of her stuff and um so i'm also a huge Marin morris fan which i've talked about before i've posted about her i think she's like this cool badass great grovelly growly voice really cool songwriter um but that is what kind of led me into listening to casey musgraves but both of them have participated on um, elton john's new album which is like covering uh some of his older songs so listening to them if you're into elton john that's a great way to dip your toe it's always nice to hear somebody uh new through a song that you might already know does that make sense i think that it does um so before i get into more questions guess what time it is you guys time for our sponsor hello fresh we've had hello fresh on here before you guys know what that is right you guys know hello fresh it is a meat wait back it up i i got my words mixed up it is a meal kit delivery service that shops plans and deliver step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so that you can just cook eat and enjoy um, so there's three meal plans you guys get to choose from classic veggie and family and each box is made up of fresh responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high rated trusted sources of course that's important to so many people uh, being able to use these uh, responsibly obtained ingredients that's a big one um, it takes uh, family dinners. It makes them fuss-free with HelloFresh's picky eater, kid-tested and approved family plan recipes. I know everybody here listening, we all have busy lives. Um, and if cooking's not something that uh, that you want to like go out and grocery shop, listen, it's time-consuming. It's also incredibly expensive. Sometimes like filling your own fridge it costs a lot of money. Um, so to be able to work with HelloFresh and know exactly what you're getting and know that it's healthy, it's sourced properly, it's just such a, it's such a great way to at least give it a try. You know, see if it fits into your lifestyle, see how quickly it is to get a good meal on the table. I mean, there's 20 minute meals on their classic menu for when you really don't have more time than that. I mean, what more could you ask for? Um, uh, yeah, and you can feel confident when cooking HelloFresh with the simple recipes outlined uh, and pictured step-by-step 
uh, instructions on their cards as well. Um, it's actually the, yeah, the packaging for it's super adorable. You guys will love it. Um, so yeah, spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and get that time back to do more of what you actually love. Get delicious filling meals delivered right to your door every week with less than $10 per serving and free shipping. The account is so easy to manage with ability to choose your delivery date to match your ever-changing schedule and pause deliveries for when you're on vacation. Let me tell you, that is a huge, huge bonus for me. So what you guys have to do um, for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter our promo code REGULARGIRLS30. That's HelloFresh.com and enter our promo code REGULARGIRLS30. Get out there. Get some hello fresh up in your life you will not regret it and yeah just give it a try see how much it makes your life a little bit easier give yourself a give yourself a little pat on the back every now and then make your life a little bit easier when you can okay uh next question from supporting renee hey thanks for the support yo uh books or movies um both both, obviously. I mean, how can you pick one or the other? Um, both open your imagination. You know, I was having a conversation the other day about how great it is to take time. I, I'm really in this, like, trying to, like, slow life down mode a little bit. I feel like everybody could kind of use a little bit of that. I feel like especially for me, I don't know if it's, like, coming off of WrestleMania week. Oh, what a week it was. Um, to getting home and like it's sometimes it's hard to wind down and even if you're reading or you're watching a movie you're thinking of a million other things that you should be doing um and it's I, I feel like it, it you know obviously it's making you not present in the moment but like looking at your phone or thinking about uh you know just checking off like a mental list of stuff that you need to do so I'm really trying to like focus on not doing that and I feel like trying to read more is certainly helping me with that um but, you know, watching a movie uh, is always a great time. Did I really delve off of that question there, guys? Ooh, so sorry. Um, next question from Ella18. Oh, at Dolph's page. Hold on, I need a sip of beer. Ah, all right. Is there a quote or phrase that you've read or heard that inspires you? Um, I mean, listen, I see some every now and then that stick out with me, like, uh, stay in your magic or don't let anyone steal your glow or something like that. Like I do, those ones do speak to me and I do love those. They certainly resonate with me of uh, feeling like my sparkle has been dimmed from time to time. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm not big into like posting quotes on Instagram or like trying to be super inspirational. I always feel like, and maybe, maybe this is wrong of me, but I feel like when you spend so much time like posting these inspirational things, I think it means something's up. I think it means like you're in a bit of hot water. You're being a little too reflective on life. Um, I, I'm not into it. I feel like it's a bit of a red flag. Um, so I, I'm not, uh, I'm not big into it. I feel like people are going to disagree with me on that or think that, is that mean? Is that mean that I said that? I don't mean that from an negative mean spot but I just feel like yeah when I see people projecting too much on other people it's just not my thing definitely not my thing Ooh, all right from so, uh Ali hugged Sasha hey congratulations um this one's from uh, Ziegler's aura does he have an aura does he have an aura about him um okay who are your fashion influences um, I always have mine. Mine change a lot. I've always been super into like the simple, pared down French girl chic. I love a very minimal makeup, red lip, um, just sort of like stumbled upon looking like a babe look. I love that. It's one of my favorites. But lately, I feel like I've been veering into a little more um, of an eccentric tone. Uh, if you saw the new jacket that I got, I posted on Instagram from the company, uh, the Mighty Company. They made me this really badass custom jacket, this leather custom, uh, leather jacket um, that has um, like silver tassels all in the back. They put my name in like neon writing on the back with two roses. Um, I was uh, getting you guys to actually vote on which one I should get, helping me kind of figure out how to do this custom jacket. Um, but there is nothing subtle or pared down about this jacket which makes me love it. Um, but yeah, I bounce back and forth. Sometimes I'm just like jeans and a t-shirt and then other times I really want to go for it with like a ridiculous thing. But I think I've leaned on jackets so much lately. Um, if you guys can tell, if you've watched uh, a pay-per-view at all, I usually have a very, very, very loud jacket. Um, but it's because 
you never get to see my entire outfit. So I feel like I got to go strong up top. I got to pack a punch from the get-go. So that's uh, kind of where I lean with like sparkle jackets, which is why I love this whole new Juicy Couture line because it is all vajazzled all damn day long. Um, okay, so people whose fashions I like, I love the way Zoe Kravitz dresses. She's just like cool and effortless. Um, of course, you guys know that I love me some Kate Hudson. She dabbles more in like the boho cool, which I feel like I kind of need to get back into that a little bit. I feel like I've been dressing like maybe a little too rock and roll lately. I think I need to start getting a little prettier, a little lighter. Maybe it's because the weather's changing too. It's making me feel that way. Also, you know what I really want? And I feel like people are going to talk me out of this. I want a clog. I really want a pair of clogs, but they're expensive. I was looking at some this morning uh, at 3 a.m. when I couldn't sleep. And they're like, yeah, they're kind of expensive to be a novelty shoe. Um, okay, who else are good fashion influences? Um, 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 gosh, I don't know. I feel like I have been kind of like in my own lane about stuff lately. Actually, you know who stuff I do like is, um, she's like a blogger influencer, the Salty Blonde. I don't know if you guys follow her or not, but she's always got really cool beachy, uh, if I, I'm, I'm not really a beachy person at all, but if I were, I would want to dress exactly like her. Um, okay, best vacation from Ambrose Rollins girl dog emoji. Best vacation, hands down, uh, was on our honeymoon going to Maui. Being able to just, I actually had a dream last night that I was back in Hawaii. And oh, what a dream it was. It was so lovely. Um, the food there is exceptional. The, just slowing down life a little bit. I'm really, I'm really on this page, you guys. Um, yeah, Maui was just great. There was like romance and it was fun and we had eight days. Nobody was bugging us. Um, so yeah, definitely Maui was up there for me. And even though it was such a short stint, but being in Paris, I really love Paris. I'd love to go back and do Paris um, because I went with uh, my friend who you would know as Summer Ray. Her and I went um, after we had TV in London. We took the train out to Paris went on Champs-Élysées and uh, she had never had escargot so I was like oh girl we got to get some escargot and hours later we're on like one of those like nerdy double-decker tourist um uh sightseeing things and I'm like oh is it really hot here is it just me is it really hot um and it turned into full-fledged food poisoning um I was vomiting all night long but I will say I handled it like a champ Before we were getting ready to go out, I was like, if I could just puke, I think that I would be okay. And then I just kind of had that MO the entire evening. We still went out. We went to like the bar. I think it was, if I'm remembering this correctly, this was something she wanted to go do, but it was like the last bar that Princess Diana went to before that whole fiasco. And uh, it was, yeah, it's like in this like cool hotel in Paris. Uh, But I kept like, I would order a drink try to muster getting any of it down and then I would have to have a vomit session because I was a trooper I was not willing to uh ruin my entire trip to Paris because of this hell no I will party nobody will stop me but then I take the train back to London the next day and that my friends was a crime scene um I also took my mom to Rome and that was good from like a food standpoint and it's just cool to like take your mom on a trip you know um but uh, yeah, I had amazing food. Any like everything there has the best truffles in it. Uh, the greatest little markets if you're into like cooking to get like sun dried tomatoes and really great olive oils. Um, I got really great honeys and stuff too that I could like bring back with me. Um, so from that standpoint, that would be great. And like as far as like a future vacation, I would actually love to go back to like maybe like Tuscany or something. But Italy really spoke to me. Um, but yeah, I would love to go and like stay at like a really great Airbnb or like stay on like a farm or something and do like I want to learn how to cook pasta and make homemade pasta from like an old Nona that's what I want to do that's the kind of trip that I am all about um all right let me have another sip here because I'm really talking guys I've almost been talking for 30 minutes straight are we impressed is anyone still listening if you are thanks for hanging out okay next question from uh, Kelsey. I am Kelsey91. What's your favorite thing about doing a podcast? Um, generally, my favorite thing about doing a podcast is that I get to hang out with my girlfriend, Stacy McGee. But right now, I am solo, which makes me sort of feel like Fraser Crane. I have actually always just loved the idea. 
So I've done radio before when I worked um, when I worked at the score. I had done like a little bit of radio, some other podcasts, and it's just like a cool world to be in as like um, as like a performer of any level or whatever. It's it's cool to go in and just talk Um, because you're so used to like wondering how you look and uh, I feel like you overthink things so much more when you're on TV as opposed to just like being on radio or just talking into a microphone it kind of like drops that barrier and I think it makes people like instantly more comfortable or I don't know it's just it's a really cool medium so I like doing it Um, but yeah I actually started I really wanted to start doing the podcast because um Stacey and I, for years, have always wanted to do something together. And uh, I hope she's not mad at me that I keep just, like, burping into the microphone during this podcast. Sorry, Stace. I'm just trying to make ends meet here. Um, but, uh, yeah, we had, we had always kind of wanted to do something together, um, some kind of collaboration of uh, our brains kind of coming together. But also, like, at the specific time of us doing this, um, I kind of felt like I was falling into wrestler speak. Um, there's like this whole alternate like carny language that gets used in wrestling and I felt like I was kind of starting to talk about wrestling too much and I just don't want to fall into like those habits and you know have like another job somewhere and they have no idea what I'm talking about when I say words like kayfabe and uh, put it over it's a no sell etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, that's kind of what made me want to start doing it but um, yeah it's great I love doing a podcast it's such a good time um from Ella 18 is it true that you and Heel Ziggler were supposed to have a show on the network um so yeah that was something that him and I had talked about for a while um we had we had come up with like so many different variations of what we wanted to do what we want it to look like and you know I think like hopefully with where the network is growing and turning into that maybe that platform could resurface at some point um so yeah I I still don't really know what that show will look like but uh much like uh with Stacy him and I've talked a lot about doing something together um on that kind of a, a platform so hey who knows maybe it'll happen maybe it won't let's not hold our breaths um but yeah it would be really cool to do something like that um, okay, this is from Brittany, B. Nicole0509. Which show on the Food Network would you want to compete in? Oh, buddy, let me tell you. Um, definitely Iron Chef America. Am I worthy? Hell no. I would get laughed out of there so quickly because I would cut a finger. Oh, I, I am like so amateur, but I just, I love cooking on like my own time. If I was under pressure cooking, it would be a shitstorm. It would be so, so bad. Uh, but Iron Chef America uh, is my favorite of the uh, the Food Network uh, competition shows. Um, I really like that. Um, like Cupcake Wars, no thank you. I actually just don't even really like baking. Baking's stupid to me. It's not stupid. It's just not my thing. Um, you know what show I don't much care for on the Food Network is Guy's Grocery Games. No thank you. Not interested. Also, Guy Fieri has so many shows. Do you remember when he was doing Minute to Win It? That was a good show. I want to host that show. Why does that show not exist anymore? I actually quite enjoyed it. Obviously, R.I.P. Um, okay, uh, from Aaron at Aaron MM5, would you ever play a person in a horror movie? Uh, I actually have. So I've done a f- I've, I've definitely done like one horror movie. I'm trying to think of other ones. Like, I f- you know, it's like the thing that you do when you're like starting to audition and you're working and you're acting and blah, blah, blah. I feel like everything that comes up is a horror movie because they're like student films or independent films and everybody wants to like make the cool indie movie but the problem is the acting is always so bad in them because I think like the key to a good horror movie is having obviously nameless actors Uh, you can't have somebody like oh that's so and so from whatever Uh, it takes you like out of it if you're focusing on who the person is where they're from Um, so yeah I feel like the end of that Obviously, you know, good actors are booked and stuff and they're working, um, you know, not always right off the bat. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot here. But um, yeah, I feel like sometimes the acting is just always so bad or they're so campy and they're so cheesy. Um, 
that it just it makes everybody look bad so the one that i did god i honestly i can't even remember the name of it this was years and years ago um but we filmed part of it out at um if you're from uh you're probably not from where i'm from but if by chance you are at the uh the whitby mental institute that was there the one that was like um a, the fully abandoned one so they've rebuilt a whole new one that's beautiful but the one that they abandoned is so creepy um you can see snippets of it from uh an old um billy talent music video what up canada i'll never let you go um but uh yeah we shot it in there and i i, I just like I, I i'm having like such vague snippets there's so many like random weird things like work wise that I have done prior to where I am now so like some of them are like such like they're just like fragments of a memory of things that I've done but anyways I have done one it was truly atrocious Uh, I'm sure that you could not find it if you wanted to but I remember like having a flashlight and trying to like be all scared and oh god and then I had to do a scene where I got stabbed and they kept making me reshoot it because it's really hard to do like a scream or act like you're dying without it sounding like the sexuals um if you're picking up what i'm putting down so yeah it was uh it was awkward it was a it was a learning curve for moi uh but i yeah i mean listen i love a good horror movie love them uh there's the new one on netflix uh gosh is it just called it's called victoria or something like that i posted about it not long ago very good it's spanish um, but yeah, it was a pretty cool uh, movie. Uh, Peter Rosenberg told me about it, which by the way, quick shout out to Peter Rosenberg. Um, his new show came out on Complex on Thursday uh, called Open Late with Peter Rosenberg. It's a really cool late night hip hop fusion show. Um, I've posted about that too. It's on my Instagram. So definitely check out his show. It's really cool. Uh, it gives me hope that there's still cool shows out there that can happen and can exist and be born. Um, so yeah. Shout out to old Peter Rosenberg. All right, from three Beyonce's. Oh, I'm I'm with you on that. I love a good Beyonce. Give me three of them. We're partying. Is it worth it being an adult? Yeah, man. Being an adult's awesome. You know why? You got a job. You can pay your bills. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's great. I don't know why people say that. Uh, okay, yeah, there's like dumb things about like, I don't want to adult today, whatever. But like, no, being an adult's like pretty cool. Because you're the adult. You're, the, you're, you're your own parent at that point. You're steering your own bus. You can drive. Um, your credit hopefully is in a good spot. Um, God, I've had bad credit before. What a bummer that is. Um, yeah, being an adult's cool. I like it. You, you can, like, get married. You can buy a dog whenever you feel like it. Anytime you decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to get a dog. And I mean, you know, be responsible as a, as a pet owner. But... You can get a dog whenever you want. Okay. Um, From Tiffany, Plant 36 Do you have any good makeup tutorials for a pale girl who isn't very good at makeup but wants to try to save money as a bridesmaid in June? Girl, let me tell you. Here's the thing. When you're pale, especially now that my hair is platinum, my biggest fear is getting makeup in my hair um, because you can see that on TV and it's not a good look. Um, so what I like to do is use a BB cream because it's much lighter. It's thinner. I don't know what like your skin type, skin type is like, but, um, uh, if you need like a more coverage than that or something, but NARS makes a really nice, um, concealer. Uh, and I like to start the concealer because if you start more in the middle of your face and work out, you're not using so much. But what I also think is key for a pale girl is a fill in your eyebrows. That's the key here. Fill in the eyebrows and put on a red lip and you're done. You're done. I mean, okay, maybe not for like a daytime wedding. You might need something a little more subtle than that. But you could pare it down and find like a nice lip to go with it. But um, also, listen, I will talk about Glossier all day, every day. Their cloud paint. Um, uh, their, oh God, why can I not think of the name of it right now? I'm like a neck into my Miller Lite, you guys. It's not because of that. Um, The cream blush. The cream blush is exceptional. It blends beautifully, which I find is really hard for pale skin because it can seem so pigmented and intense. Um, But the cloud paints blend so, so great. Um, And now, friendos, it's time for our next sponsor from Hims. Oh, yes, Hims. This one's for the guys. If there is still a male listening right now this is for you but it you know it can be for your husband your boyfriend your dad whoever you want to hook up with some hymns it is a one-stop shop for hair loss skincare sexual wellness 
for men. So Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat ED, well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you combat ED. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements, prescription solutions backed by science. One ED pill starting with a V just came off patent on December 11th, and that is a huge game changer. So the thing here with Hims is that there's no waiting room, no awkward doctor visits, no lines. You can save hours by going to forhims.com. It's super, super easy. All you have to do is answer a few quick questions and chat with the doctor for confidential review. And the products are shipped directly to your door. So severe ED isn't just an issue for rich old guys in bathtubs. It affects men in their 30s and 40s. So being your best means performing your best. Uh, No in-person doctor's visit, which is huge. I can only imagine the stress of having to go talk to a doctor about ED. Nobody wants to do that. It's like an awkward, weird thing. So this way you can skirt around that and still get to the solution. Um, It's erectile without the dysfunction. Hard, made, easy. Say hello to your little friend. So what you guys do is uh, you can try Hims for a month today for just $5. We're going to get you guys started with 5 bucks while supplies last. You can see the website for all the full details. Uh, and this would normally cost hundreds of dollars if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. So go to Hims.com slash R-G. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash R-G forhams.com slash regular dealing with some ed up in here for you guys um all right back to the old twitter q a aaron flip-flops or sandals flip-flops why do flip-flops get a bad rap i don't like that like listen i just want a good haviana i wear havianas all the time like that's just like the standard regular flip-flop uh and I feel like I've seen, like, magazines, like, you can't wear those. It's like you wear those in, like, a shower. Like, listen, I'm not going to the YMCA. I'm wearing these flip-flops. I'm going to the grocery store, and I'm bumming around. Let me live my life. Um, this is another one from Sasha Banks. Legit, if you weren't working for WWE, what exactly would your job be? It's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, definitely something, like, still in this vein as far as, like, being a TV host or whatever I am. Um... Yeah, definitely something within that. I mean, that's always what I have done, and that's always what I've aspired to do. Uh, But yeah, I landed at WWA. cannot believe I've been there for six years. The fact that I just went through my sixth WrestleMania with WWE is a gigantic trip. I can't believe how quickly that time went by. Um, But you know, I was was, um, hosting uh, this thing that we do for all of the um, partners that we work for with WWE, the Business Partner Summit. Um... And while we're there, I mean, obviously, we're, like, hyping up WWE, letting people know what they're working with, who we are. But watching, like, the video packages that WWE puts together, it's very impressive. The fact that we reach as many people as we do and um, we're seeing so many places, we do so much charity work, we do so many shows a year, it truly is unlike anywhere else. Um, I feel like... We crank out so much content and do so much just on like a regular daily basis that for me to like go back to what I was doing before would probably just seem like like way less work. Was that is that good? Bad? I don't know. But um no, WWE is a yeah, it's a it's an interesting cool place to have landed. Um and I'm I'm glad that I did. I mean, shit, I met my husband here, so that's great. Um but yeah, it's, uh, it was not necessarily the thing that was totally like on my radar of like a stop that I felt that I needed to make, but I'm glad that I did. So what up, WWE? Um, from Anna Holcomb, favorite conspiracy theory? Obviously that Tupac is still alive. He's got to be alive, right? There's no way he's not alive. Listen, we got the hologram. Cool, 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 whatever. I think that Tupac's still alive. I think that it's something that we can all delve into a little more on another date, another time when Stacey and I do another conspiracy theory podcast. Because that one's like, that one's obviously super popular. But um, yeah, I really love the idea of Tupac still being alive and uh, just pulling one over on all of us. What if he's just on an island somewhere living his best damn life, drinking a Miller Lite, listening to regular girls? No chance. Um, From Errol... Kurosawa, Kurosawa, what are three things that make you happier? Well, those ones are easy. Obviously, my husband, obviously, my dog, obviously, carbohydrates. 
Duh. Um, okay, this one's from Craig Kirkendall. Holy bleep, I was just thinking about you doing an AMA the other day so I could ask you what your ring entrance music would be. This is crazy. It's like we willed it into existence. It's like I willed it into existence. Um, so, Craig, you did will it. Here we are. And now I'm taking your question. I have always said that, so before I came to WWE, I would always listen to Bicycle Race by Queen because it's so ridiculous. Um, and it would, like, put me in a good mood to just go on air and, like, not be stressed out and just have fun and whatever. So Bicycle Race has always been, like, one of my favorite songs for, like, a good pump up. And it's just so quirky and dumb. Listen to the lyrics. It's hilarious. That would be a great one. Um, I've also always loved the song Girls by Beastie Boys. That one could be really cool. Um, but Killer Queen by Queen would be uh, would be on my radar definitely as well. When you get your Hallmark movie, what actor do you like to act opposite of? That's from Melly Mel 425. Thanks, Melissa. Um, okay, so listen. We're talking Hallmark movies here. Hallmark, are you listening? Can we get this movie... The jig is up. Let's get going on this. Um, and it's not, it doesn't have to be Dean Cain. Is he not the regular guy that does everything for Hallmark? Is that what's happening here? I'm being mocked right now. <laughs> um, Dean Cain is like the regular Hallmark guy. Um, oh my God, you guys, what if it was Jerry O'Connell? What if I went Jerry O'Connell so that him and I can bridge our feud? I'm sure he's available. I think Jerry O'Connell's the best choice. I would love to work with Jerry O'Connell on a Hallmark movie. That's my move. Um, okay. Um, from Suge. Metal Gear Suge. Are you a pineapple on pizza kind of person? I am 100% that kind of a person. Truly, listen, I love all pizza, but pineapple pizza Hawaiian is my go-to. I just don't understand why people are not on board with pineapple pizza. I don't get it. Um, it's delicious. It's a nice juxtaposition. It's great on the palate. Is, is it the people that are saying this have just not tried it? Is that really where we're at here? I don't know. Expand your horizons. Put pineapple on it. Pineapple's good on everything. It's good for you. Um, from Sunny. What is the secret to finding somebody to love? I have nothing to go on. Jeez, Sunny, come on. Things can look up. And here's the good news. Good news and bad news. The good news is it shows up when you're least expecting it. Problem is, you got to get over everything to stop expecting it. Because when you want to find love, you're thinking about it all the time. Um, but you, you got to get good and jaded, and then it'll come knocking on your door. That's how it works generally, I think. Um, just be open to opportunities and ideas. Get on some apps. Do a couple swipes. Check out some profiles. You know, maybe uh, maybe go outside your type. Maybe that's how you find a good piece of ace. Um, Jim Spartus, McDonald's, Burger King, Arby's, or Subway. Well, if you put Wendy's on there, I would have said Wendy's. If you put Dairy Queen on there, I would have said Dairy Queen. But based off of this, I had Arby's for lunch today because I like their sliders. They're delicious. You get that jalapeno roast beef. Ooh, you're off to the races. Also, a curly fry. Come on. Curly fries are the best. Um, but I eat Subway the most out of all of them because obviously it's the healthiest option, blah, blah, blah. Um, Ashish Agarwal, uh, best singer in the locker room. It has to be Drama King, right? Uh, that's talking about Aiden English. Um, okay, so yes, obviously Aiden English is a great singer. I'm sure that he'll hit Broadway at one point or another. But here's a cool piece of information that um, I don't know if you guys like fully understand this because I don't know if I fully understood it until this past week at WrestleMania. Um, Elias is a very great singer. Great singer. Stellar guitar player. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Elias on that one because he's, uh, he's, a, like, he's, just, he's underrated with how great he is with that stuff. Um, Chelsea Stopper 99991. What kind of music do you listen to on a long travel day? Um, you know, I've been listening to other than Casey Musgraves. That's quite nice. Is um, Dan Auerbach's album, uh, which I had not really listened to until just say, a couple weeks ago, but it popped up on. Um, uh, I was on Sirius XM the other day, so I was listening to it. But it's just like good, mellow, feel good music. He's uh, the guy from the Black Keys. Um, this is a solo deal, and uh, yeah, it's really cool. I definitely suggest uh, giving it a shot. Um, 
And I'm gonna go ahead and just take three more questions. Last question, or one of them, uh, what was your favorite entrance at WrestleMania 34? Easy, Shinsuke Nakamura. Can we talk about, oh my God, having Nina, guitar player, jump out there. She plays with Alice Cooper. She's so cool, such a badass. She was so lovely to meet. Um, But watching her just like shred and then Shinsuke coming out in like a full velvet like suit. Oh, that one rocked my world. I actually went like side stage for that one to get my eyes on like the entire uh, reaction from everybody. So definitely that. Um, uh, What's my favorite horror movie? That is from Dumpster Fire. Hey, if you're going to start a fire, I guess the dumpster is a good place to do it. Um, Favorite horror movie? (sighs) You know what one was really cool that I watched that like kind of caught me by surprise? Have you guys seen the movie Creep? Creep was a really cool movie. Um, It's got Michael Shannon in it who's just like creepy regularly. Um... That one was cool. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite one because there's like the obvious one still is like a favorite one, like Poltergeist, um, literally any of the Poltergeist. Those ones kind of like shook me to my core as a child. Um, Blair Witch started off the entire like camcorder recording deal. Um, and I really like the um, – uh, oh, God, now I'm drawing a blank. This is why I can't host a podcast by myself because while I'm filling time trying to think of the thing I'm trying to say, Stacy helps me out with it. Paranormal Activity. Paranormal Activity movies I really like. They got campy. They got weird. They got dumb. But, like, the first two to three of them scared the crap out of me. I love um, – I love the, like, I love that video cam, home video, um, like, style. I think that just always makes things super creepy and realistic. And what I like about a good horror movie, too, is I like not seeing the ghost or the creature or whatever. I feel like as soon as you see the, like, ghoul, it takes me out of it. Um, I feel like you would never actually, like, see the ghost. I think it would just mess with you. But I like to stick mostly ghosts, less monsters. Love a good horror movie. Final question. Um, oh, God. Uh, um, um. Oh, you know, I'm going to take this one. All right, what songs did you end up adding to your workout playlist? I need new workout tunes, LOL. So I didn't get that far with this because I ended up getting on a flight um, and I couldn't access the songs that I hadn't already downloaded. Um, So it's not very long, so it's fine that I can read these to you. I've got Click by Jay-Z, Machine Gun Funk by Notorious B.I.G., Give Me the Loop by Biggie, uh, Dead Wrong featuring Eminem with Biggie, Simon Says by Pharaoh Munch, uh, Hip Hop by Dead Prez, Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See by Busta Rhymes, Triumph from Wu-Tang, Hate Me Now by Nas, Bad Boy for Life by Diddy, Victory, Diddy, Jesus Walks, Kanye, Touch the Sky, Kanye, Everything I Am, Kanye, yo, what a jam. Love Lockdown, Kanye, Money, Power, Respect with the Locks and Lil' Kim, Magic Stick, Lil' Kim, and Shake That, Eminem. So not a ton on there yet. Um, so if you guys have more, let me know about them because, uh, But something like in that vein. I like like 90s, early 2000s. I guess some of those are later than that. But uh, I like that kind of hip hop. I like to feel dangerous when I work out. Guys, this has been the podcast. This is Regular Girls. Thank you so much for sending me enough questions to get through almost an hour worth of a podcast by myself. I am so annoying. I can't believe you guys listened to me for that long. I'm going to go finish my beer Um, and, uh, hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.